Hi everyone, in this task you will be displaying the Fibonacci sequence. The task description says write a program that takes the number of terms in the Fibonacci sequence from the user and displays the sequence. So let's say the user enters 5. So you have to display the first 5 numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. If the user enters 10, you have to you have to take that as the number of terms and you have to display to the user the first 10 Fibonacci numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. So pause the video, attempt the task. I'm sure you are going to do great. And after three seconds, you're going to see my solution. So how was the task? I'm sure you solved it splendidly. We have gone over these uh, Fibonacci sequence. I'm just going to uh, go over the ideas one more time. So the Fibonacci sequence starts from zero and one. Some people say it starts from one. Some people say it starts from zero. So we assume that, but the majority, they say it starts from zero. So we are going to say starts from zero and it is a naturally occurring sequence. So, um, you can read more about that. I'm not going to discuss it anymore. Uh, it starts from zero and then goes to one. And then the next number is the uh, addition of the previous two numbers. So we have zero and then we have one. And what is the third term? You just have to go ahead and uh, combine one plus zero. You're going to get one. So that is the third number. If you combine one plus one, you're going to get two. This is the fourth term. If you combine two plus one, you're going to get three. This is the fifth term. So this, in this manner, you can create the Fibonacci sequence. So what is the next one? Two plus three, five. What is the other one? Three plus five, eight. The next one is going to be 13 and then 21 and then uh, 34, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, 55 and then 89 and so on and so forth. Yeah, 89. So these are, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So these are the first 12 Fibonacci numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. So the number of terms is going to be accepted from the user. So we are going to say input. And this time I'm going to say enter a uh, number of terms. And then what do we want to do with that? So first I'm going to um, create two variables, x1 and x2. The value of x1 is going to be 0. The value of x2 is going to be 1. Because these are the starting points for the sequence. And then I'm going to initialize another variable to 0. We are going to change this value. Now... We need to make sure that the user enters a positive number. So we are going to say if uh, positive number for the uh, number of terms. If terms is uh, less than or equal to zero, uh, zero, we are going to print, uh, please, okay, let me fix that. Please enter a positive um number or integer you can say integer now if the number of terms is one we are just going to show that it is going to be zero so if terms is equal to one then what do we want to show to the user we want to print a formatted string and we are going to say the first term of the Fibonacci sequence is, let's just print another one and we're going to say x1. Why? Because the value of x1, initially it is going to be 0. And the entire magic actually happens in the else clause. So first off, we are going to say print the Fibonacci sequence is as follows. So we are going to use a while loop and we are going to check for as long as count is less than the number of terms. And why this? 
the count is zero and let's say the user enters zero when the terms is zero or less than that we are not going to come to the else clause uh, statement we are going to go to the f the first statement and we are going to print this this to the user if the number of terms is one we are going to go to the lf but if the number of terms is two it means that terms is bigger than count so for as long as terms is bigger than count we want to run this loop and whenever it is not we don't want to run it and we want to print the x1 so the x1 is actually going to display the sequence to the user what is going to be the sequence now first i'm going to write the code for it and then using doc strings i'm going to explain it so you really get because i feel like this is going to this is this is going to tend to become a little bit confusing because there is a lot of swapping of the values so i will try my best to explain it in the most easiest way possible so we are going to because every other number every next number is the addition of the previous or the preceding two numbers so we are going to say x1 uh, plus x2 and then uh, we need to update our numbers so updating uh, the values the values how can we update the values I'm gonna set the value of x1 to x2 I'm going to explain this why I've done this and we are going to set the value of x2 to the value of whatever the value of the nth variable is and then let's increase the count by one the reason that we increase it because this is the part where it keeps this loop from becoming an infinite loop so we need to uh, provide a condition that is going to satisfy this loop so it doesn't become an infinite loop let's save that first off let's go ahead and let's run this program let's say let's say we want to grab the first 12 numbers in the Fibonacci sequence and you can see that we got 0 1 1 2 3 5 8 13 21 34 55 and 89 now what has actually happened here I'm going to close that and I'm going to open a doc string this is not a an ideal use case for a doc string but it proves my point so because this is a while loop we have different iterations and I'm going to name them first second third and so on so in the first iteration if I I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so the reason for that is uh, we should be able to see this as well as well as the sequence so in the first we say we print x1 so x1 is going to give us the Fibonacci sequence all right so uh, the first uh, for x1 I'm just going to provide a few symbols so the first value of x1 we know that it is zero right so it is zero and then we have nth so nth is going to be 0 plus what is the value of x2 now I'm talking about this line so uh, it is 1 and then we say that the value of x1 has to become the value of x2 and we know that the value of x2 is 1 so x1 becomes 1 in here and x2 we set it to the value of nth so 0 plus 1 is going to be 1 and then we increase the count by one and we check whether this condition satisfies or not whether this condition returns true or not and we know because we have entered 12 count is 1 plus 0 1 12 is of course greater than 1 let's go to the second iteration in the second iteration um, I'm going to provide these symbols so the value of x1 we know that the value of x1 is 1 right so I'm going to pass it there these ones this wherever I've provided these symbols this is the print this is what is going to be printed to the screen or what is going to be returned to the screen so I'm just going to say shown um, shown on the screen so this is the part where where it is going to be shown on the screen and now it is one now what is the value of nth we know it is x1 plus x2 the value of x1 is one and the value of x2 is also one so one plus one what is the value of x1 it is equal to the value of x2 and what is the value of x2 it is one so let's pass in one here and now here is the magic magical part the value of x2 is equal to the nth value 1 plus 1 is 2 so I'm just going to pass in 2 here 
Let's move on to the third iteration. In the third iteration, we have x1. What is? Uh, we know that the value of x1 is 1 again, so I'm just going to pass it 1. And I'm sure you are beginning to see the pattern. So we got 0, we got 1, and 1 plus 0, we again got 1. Let's uh, uh, compute the value of nth. So the value of nth is going to be 1 plus 2. So I'm going to say 1 plus 2. The value of x1 is going to be equal to the value of x2, which is 2. And the value of x2 is going to be equal to the nth. So 1 plus 2 is going to be 3. Let's go to the fourth iteration. Now, what is the value of x1? It is, it is 2, so I'm going to, just going to pass in 2. I'm just going to speed up this process a little bit. So nth is going to be 2 plus 3, so 2 plus 3. x1 is going to be equal to the x2, which is 3. x2 is going to be equal to the nth, which is 5. And let's go to the fifth uh, iteration. And I'm going to say, what is the value of x1? This is going to be the last one. So the value of x1 is going to be 3. So let's pass in 3. nth is going to be equal to 3 plus 5. x1 is going to be equal to... Uh, 5 which is the value of x2 and x2 is going to be equal to 8 so now you can see the pattern so we have 0 we have 1 and then we have again 1 then 1 plus 1 we got 2 2 plus 1 we got 3 and then this is going to be the next value of x which is 5 the reason for that is we got so here we have 2 and here we have 3 3 plus 2 we got 5 and the next value of x1 we know it is 8 so the reason for that is we got 5 plus 3 we are going to get 8 so this is how this while loop actually works that's it for this task see you in the next one